In this video, we will look at the inner automorphisms of a group. So, G is a group. Recall that an automorphism of G is an isomorphism from G to itself. Ought G denotes the set of all automorphisms of G, and this forms a group under composition of functions. Now, let X be an element of the group G. There is a map C subscript X from G to itself defined as follows. The element G of the group G is sent to X inverse GX. This is commonly called conjugation of G by X. So now what happens if we compose C of X by C of X inverse, where here we note that this is the element X inverse of, of the group G in the subscript? Well, first of all, an element G in our group G is sent to X inverse GX by this definition. And then that is sent to X X inverse G X X inverse. This just collapses to the identity element, as does this. So we actually get our element G back. And the same thing holds if you interchange CX and CX inverse. So what this says, it says that this map CX is a permutation of G, just a bijection of, of G. And we've also shown that, in fact, C of X inverse is actually the inverse of this map CX. Now let G and H be elements of our group G. CX takes their product to X inverse GHX, which is equal to X inverse G, XX inverse HX. And what we've done here is we've inserted an identity element in the middle here and expanded it as XX inverse. When we collect these terms, what we notice is that this is just equal to X inverse GX, X inverse HX, which is equal to CX of G, CX of H. So what we've actually shown here is that CX is a homomorphism from G to itself. So we have that CX is a permutation of G and CX is a homomorphism from G to itself. What this means is that CX is an automorphism of, of G and any automorphism of this form is called an inner automorphism. The set of all inner aut automorphisms of a group G is denoted by in G. What happens if we compose two of these inner automorphisms? Well, let X and Y be elements of our group G, and then the composition CX and CY gives us the, the element G is sent to X inverse GX, and then that element gets sent to Y inverse X inverse GXY. But now we note that Y inverse X inverse just equals XY inverse. So this expression equals XY inverse GXY, and that simply equals C of XY applied to G. What this says is, it says that CX and CY equals C of XY, as this element G was arbitrary. And then what we've got here is that the composition of two inner automorphisms is an inner automorphism. And from this point here, we've got that the inverse of an inner automorphism is an inner automorphism. Or automorphism. So what this says is that the set of all inner automorphisms of G is actually a subgroup of the automorphisms of G. In the second part we will show that the inner automorphisms of G is actually a normal subgroup of the automorphisms of G and that it can be realized as the quotient of G by its center. 